All right, y'all, get that Photoshop fired on up and let's get this tutorial rocking and rolling. First things first, I'm just gonna go over a couple of different textures I might be using for this tutorial. And the first one is this one I picked up at Envato.com, which is this really trippy color gradient. And the cool thing with Envato.com is they have licensed material to use on commercial projects and the yearly subscription is a couple hundred bucks and there's pretty much unlimited downloads for all of that stuff including video graphics and stock photography so use the link below because if you do we get a little kickback for sending them business so much appreciated the other cool thing is if you don't have a ton of money go hit up texturelab.org there's a bunch of free textures over there like this one and this one which is perfect for some of the grunginess that we may get into but i digress let's get going go ahead and hit new layer hit t on your keyboard for type and we're going to create a very cool logo and the name of our logo or the movie logo that we're working on is going to be exorcist that's right, Exorcist. The Exorcist movie, one of the best horror movies ever created. This thing is, yeah, it's inspiring. So we're just gonna play around with this. It's like a mock scenario, pretending that we're uh, designing for the ex the new Exorcist coming out. So yeah, get your type. I have this tracked out at 75 pixels, which is perfect. And then from here, go ahead and hit Command J for a duplicate layer. And then we can hide that bottom layer. And the reason I would do that is I wanna keep a live layer just so that I know the font that I used on this particular project. And this is actually Lee Gothic Regular, which is a great, great font. And now on this layer here, we're gonna right click and convert to Smart Object. And then from here, we're gonna make one copy. And then we're just going to get rid of that bottom copy, not get rid of it, just hide it. And on this copy, we're gonna to go to Filter and use liquify one of the best filters out there and we're going to be dragging from left to right or whoops let's make sure we're on the uh, forward warp tool and pressure can be at 100 and we're just going to like i was saying left to right just to kind of distort the type a little bit and then be careful with the x you don't want to distort the x because sometimes when you do it looks like a k you know it depends on how crazy you want to get that's good for now i'm going to hit okay from here, I'm gonna make four more copies. It gets a little ridiculous, I know. <laughs> but on this next copy, we're going back up to filter. And from filter, we're gonna go down to blur. And on blur, we're gonna go to motion blur. And on motion blur, we're going to go 90 degrees so that it's up and down in a vertical. And then we're gonna drop the distance to around, let's say 200, 194. And then we're gonna go back into filter and back to liquify and we're just going to be dragging those blurs upward and it can be a little on the random side well you'll start to see what what this is going to do for us i'm gonna hit okay i'm gonna do the same exact thing to this layer go up to filter blur motion blur except i'm going to increase it to 280 this time hit okay go back up to filter back to liquify and we're going to do the same thing Hit OK, and then one more time, that next layer above this one, blur, and then we're gonna go to motion blur, and then we're just gonna increase it to 750, and then we can go to filter, liquify, and we can just go ahead and drag a little bit just so that they're a little different on each layer, and then hit OK. And on this one, this next layer, our last layer, we're gonna make one more copy, hide that copy, and then go to the copy right below it, and from here, we're gonna do a different kind of blur, we're gonna to go to blur, gallery, field blur. And from here, we're just gonna pin a couple different areas. And if you're not seeing your pin, hit Command H, and that'll bring a pin up. And then from here, we can increase the blur amount. And we can just do this randomly, adding different pins with different amounts of blur throughout the, the logo. And then when you're done, go ahead and hit the OK button. And we have some interesting blurs going on. And you can take a look at what you just did. Just go ahead and 
get rid of those other bottom layers and you can see what that that blur does it, it kind of starts to connect some of those layers as well what we do next is start to add a little bit of color and to do that we can just go ahead and use layer styles and go to the layer that you want to color and we're just going to work our way down so i'm just going to stop at the, the layer below our blur gallery layer that we just did double click layer styles come up and then go to color overlay and we can start looking for some horror style colors like some yellows and then probably do the same thing at the next one double click layer style color overlay maybe get some teal and the colors aren't going to really matter all that much because we might just use a gradient map to have it all blend together but if you're a color person then this is how you do it just so that we have different colors and values on each layer all right, design friends, if you've learned anything up until this point, please go ahead and hit that like button so that we can improve the algorithm and then YouTube will help share this tutorial. I really appreciate it. All right, from here, let's go ahead and get organized just a tad. So we're going to hit shift on, well, actually, we're going to group all of our logo together. So on that uppermost, right below all of our textures, we can hit shift and go down to our last logo and then hit command G and we're gonna name our folder logo. And then right above logo, we're gonna do one more new layer, hit shift, delete, and that's going to let us fill with 50% gray, hit okay. And from here, we can go ahead and convert this or turn this into a halftone. So go into filter gallery and then at filter gallery, make your halftone pattern a line at two size and contrast at 29 and hit okay. And now we can turn this into a smart object. And now we're gonna double click on our smart object and we're now in smart, smart object land. So now we're gonna distort this even more. So go up to filter liquify and now we're just going to drag and distort our halftone slightly so that we have some really cool effects starting to happen and then we're going to use this as a mask and then hit okay and now on channels actually go from layers to channels and then just pick the blue one and hit command and left click and now we have a selection now we can go back to layers hit our Japanese flag mask icon, and now we have a mask to work with, which is great. So now we can just copy this and, and paste it onto our canvas. So hit Command C, and then drag it back over here, or actually paste it by hitting Command V. And now we have this awesome, awesome mask to drop on our logo. So now we can just hit Option, drag it on our logo folder, hide this layer, and now look at that. Isn't that really cool? <laughs> I, I, I like doing that. And from here, we can kind of either get rid of some layers that aren't working for us or add some layers. It just all depends. Or drop the opacity, like that's a little strong. So let's just go ahead and drop that. And then same thing. We're just going to go back in and see what's working and not working. Sometimes it just you just drop the opacity by a little bit. So it's, this is just another subjective situation. It's all up to you as the artist and designer. But the idea is we don't want to, we want to be able to read Exorcist because if this is going to go on a movie poster or something, whatever you're designing, you kind of want to be able to read it. So there's like, there's a little bit of a balancing act. So maybe on this bottom layer, I'm just going to blur this a little bit with the Gaussian blur. So I'm going to be clicked on that layer, go up to filter, blur, Gaussian, and see if this is going to help a little bit. That's cool. And then same thing on this top layer. I want to have a little bit of... Actually, let's make one more copy in case we have to mess with anything else. But on this one, we can go ahead and filter, blur, motion. And then we're going to do this one more like a, a diagonal like that. And you can kind of see how many pixels you want to use. Something like that. And then I'm just going to drop the opacity. There we go. Now I'm going to just drop a texture behind this so that we have something to kind of give it a cool effect. And then on top of that, I'm just going to add a curves and then we're just gonna drop the, the lighting to make it a little darker. And then I'm kind of thinking we need Exorcist to read a little bit better. So with that top one, we're just gonna add a mask, invert the mask, and then just paint that E in. I know I blurred it before, but I think we need it to show a little better. So I'm painting with white like that. 
Same thing with that X. Maybe we want that X to show a little better right there. Very cool. And from here, we're gonna add a fair amount of noise. And to do that is we can just go ahead and hit option, new layer, and that's gonna bring up the new layer window. And we can just call this N25 for 25 noise so that you remember how much you've used. Go to overlay, fill with overlay neutral color, hit okay, drag this up to the top. And now we can go to filter, noise, add noise, and I'm already at 25, and make sure monochromatic is not checked because that'll just turn your noise into black and white. And then this way we have a little bit of color, which is a little more fun. And then from here, let's go ahead and mess around with that top. I don't know, some kind of a gradient color to see if this is gonna make it a little cooler. And then we can just do a blending mode. And then on top of that, we can even tweak it more by using curves, Option Command G to clip it to that layer and then sometimes it helps to bring it down a little bit like that and I'm going to go back down into our layer that had the sideways I think that needs to be toned down the the sideways motion blur and then I'm going to drag that noise layer up above our colored layer and then also I want to use this other texture so we're just going to use a blending mode probably screen or lighten, go on screen, and I'm gonna drop the opacity. I don't know, I think that looks pretty cool. That was fun to make, and uh, I hope you guys learned something. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace.